Let's quickly go and do that. We click on our foundation, go to our materials library, choose a material that we feel is suited to the construction of this room. I'll choose these carpets. And you can see then we've got a carpeted material applied to the foundation of our second bedroom. And we can go through the process of either choosing the same material. You can see I'll just take my color tint through our wheel here. Same material to our master bedroom. And we'll put a separate material. Let's make this white using our pinwheel. We'll go to concrete. And I'll place a concrete finish in my double garage area. So that's the overall concept of separating each floor in the house, each room in the house that we wish to apply separate material finish to, creating a unique foundation or the, its own floor in each room of the house that we want to have a separate flooring material attached to. Let's move on now to um, door and window placement within our virtual decorator model. Now anyone that's familiar with the concept of how we place um, doors into our virtual decorator model using the basic version of the software would be familiar with the very simple way we represent doors in our software by creating a shape on the wall that's the approximate size and height of a door and then pasting a digital photograph of the door that we want to see represented as seen onto that shape. We obviously have some doors pre-built into our library and we give you the capacity to add your own digital photographs into that library to extend your, your range of doors that are available to you and your range of windows. Now, I believe that creating doors in this way is a, is a great way to very quickly and very simply visually cue doors into a scene to see the style of door and the color of door and the placement of doors in a scene. But we do make available a more advanced door and opening tool to users of the master upgrade. So let's talk about the more advanced tool, potentially why you would use it, how you would use it and, and build an example of a, a custom opening in a space. So how we get to the advanced opening tool is we go to the buildings tools and you can see here in the middle of the tool set is something called the opening tool. There's also a door building tool and a window building tool. You know what, 99.9% .9 of the time when we're building models using the software, we use the opening tool. And this is why if I click on the opening tool and I click on the wall, what happens is the software automatically creates for me an opening complete with frame and mullion work that allows me line of sight. I can make out this is glass and I can see what I would see through that opening. So it's far more powerful in my opinion to use the openings tool than the door building tool or the window building tool. So let's place a, um, an opening in this wall. Again, if I press delete, go to my opening tool, click where I want the opening to be. Here's my default opening. So just like the wall, where the wall building tool creates a default value of 2400 millimeter high wall, 200 millimeters deep, and the length of the wall is determined by how far you drag with your left hand mouse button held down. The opening tool creates a default value opening. So if we wanted to change the default value, which is going to be true almost all of the time, we're not going to want to simply accept the default value, we go, guess where? To the options box. And in the options box, we go to where we can adjust the scale of this opening, the X, Y, and Z values for this opening. So let's type a, a value in here. So let's put in two meters. And you can see what has happened here is the two meter value now is applied to my default opening. So I click on the opening, change the um, X value. I wanna make this 820 millimeters. And you can see now I have a, an opening 820 millimeters by two meters high. So let's make that 2200. We're going to make this a door. Click apply. And I can use my move tool to then move my opening into just the right spot that I want it to be in. Anytime I want to go back and grab that opening, I can grab that opening. Okay. So this gives us our opening with a direct line of sight. Obviously, we can use our color tool to make this opening fully opaque and fully transparent. So if you're going to use it as a door, you might make it opaque. If it was going to have some glass in that space, you might make it semi-transparent. Now, let me talk to you about 
um, modifying this opening even further. When we have the opening selected, you can see in our context sensitive toolbar now, we have a new tool called edit the selected window of door or door. So if I have the, the wall selected, you can see this, uh, this tool is not available to me. It's context sensitive. You have to have the opening selected to see this tool. So select a wall, it's not available. Select the opening, the edit the selected window or door tool is made available to you. If we click on this tool, you can see a dialog box appear that's called the window and door designer. It's a great tool. It's very simple to use. The best way to learn the tool is to kind of just get in there and have a bit of a play with it. This gives you a chance to change the frame thickness, the mullion thickness, and most importantly, be able to adjust the frames and mullions in your door by basically going through a process of building up the window door, making it look however you want it to look. Now you add sections in by clicking on the icon at the top left hand screen. You can see the red marker on the screen control is telling you where the um, insertion point would be. A left mouse button down will insert an, uh, an object and the right hand mouse button down will remove. So you go through the process of adding bits in and taking pieces away until you come up with a design that perfectly suits your ideas for what it is that you want to build. So once you've created this two-dimensional visual representation of the panels and panes that you wish to place into a scene, what we need to do is click on the 3D button here. So click on 3D and that will update our 3D scene with your design in our three-dimensional visual world. So this is the concept of using the opening tool. As I mentioned before, for people that want to simply see what a door will look like in their scene, I still really do think this is a great way to add doors and windows into our scene. It's fast, it's effective, it's really simple to understand, but we do provide a new opening tool available in the master upgrade that provides then the capacity to physically cut a hole through the wall where you get then the opportunity to talk about line of sight. What can I see through there? And the larger the window, the bigger the area, the greater the impact that's going to have on your model as you can kind of get a, an outlook or a perspective of a point of view through a big um, set of sliders or maybe a feature window. So that's the overall concept of doors and windows. The next step in our process is to talk about how we put a roof onto our model. Now we're going to talk about how we would place a roof, a ceiling and roof structure onto the top of our virtual decorator model. And we have a number of ways of doing this. Let's assume that we're going to be sticking with a single story structure here. So we basically click on the foundation that we originally created. You can see if I go back to my color tool and I make this fully opaque, I click on the foundation tool and you can see a number of tools are available to me down here in the context sensitive toolbar, one of these tools say build roof base tool. And this creates a roof base from the outline of a foundation. So if I simply click on this tool, you can see a dialog box will appear that says, what is the height of the roof base? Is there an overhang involved? And what is the depth of the roof base? So let's just leave this at our default values, which is 2400 high. Now we need to generally um, have a relationship between the height of the walls that we've chosen and the roof base height. So if you chose 2700 high walls, typically what you would do is you'd come in here and you'd go, it's 2700 high for the roof base. So let's go to 2400 high because that was the height of the walls that we had. I'm going to leave a 300 millimeter overhang on this roof and the roof base will be 100 millimeters deep. When I press build, you can see what the software has actually done is it's created a roof base that is following the foundation or the outline of the foundation that we first created, plus a 300 millimeter overhang here at a height of 2,400 millimeters high. So if you were doing a, a flat roof, I mean, it's as simple as that to put a flat roof on.